Welcome to A New Creation. I'm Phyllis and thank you for joining me today. Every episode of A New Creation is commissioned by the Holy Spirit. It is new and it is from God. Today's message, Wake Up, Walk in Obedience, came from the mouth of God. Holy Spirit wants us to know that true freedom is found in obedience to God, obedience to His Word. And when we study His Word, obey His Word, we find that He is even more open to teaching us His will. Last week, while I was spending time with the Lord, I was doing worship, it was during the time of worship, it was during the time of me meditating on the Word of God. I asked Holy Spirit, is there something on the heart of God? Is there something that is in His mind that He would want me to share with you today? And at that time, I didn't get an answer. And that was on last Friday. The following Saturday, and it was Saturday afternoon, I was led by the Holy Spirit to listen to a particular teaching by a man of God by the name of Troy Black. And he was teaching in the book of First Kings. And he was speaking on the characteristics of the prophet Elijah. And during that teaching, he was pointing out how it was important for people to obey God as the prophet Elijah did. And the, the passage of scripture that I'm going to share with you that he was teaching from can be found in 1 Kings chapter 17. And I'm going to begin with verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to read the New King James Version of the scripture. And it reads, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And I will be that you, and it will be, that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. Did you hear that? The man of God was pointing out that Elijah, who's the prophet of God, obeyed God's commandment. And it started with the prophet Elijah going to King Ahab, he's the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. And he went to King Ahab at that time and he pronounced judgment. He pronounced that there will be a drought in the land and it will be there until he says that it will no longer be there. And the reason why that's so important is because during that time, during, the, during that time, the northern kingdom of Israel was in the midst of Baal worship. Who is Baal? Or Baal? Spells, the name is spelled B-A-A-L. He is a false god, a false god that Ahab's wife, Jezebel, she worshiped. And she was from Sidon. That's the, that is in the northern kingdom of Israel. It's really north of the northern kingdom of Israel. And her father is Ethbaal, E-T-H-B-A-A-L. He actually was a priest of Baal. And that's the god that he worshiped, her father worshiped, and that was Jezebel's father, Ethbel, and that was Ahab's wife, Jezebel. So Ahab had been pretty much complicit in his wife teaching many of the people in the northern kingdom of Israel about Baal worship. She had 450 prophets that sat at her table, which meant that when, it, when, it, when the term sat at the table, it means that they gave her counsel. They were there around her table and giving her counsel about how she is to conduct herself there in the northern kingdom of Israel. And Ahab, who himself was the king, he was complicit in the worship of Baal with his wife. And so God pulled a prophet, Elijah. Now, Elijah was a Tishbite. At that time in scripture, there was no mention at all of the prophet Elijah. And this was the, the, the law of first mention. That's when something or someone is mentioned for the first time. That's what happened in this case. Elijah the Tishbite, he was mentioned for the first time in scripture at that time. 
And what he was doing, he was going before the king of the northern kingdom of Israel, Ahab, and he was pronouncing that there would be a drought. Now, after he pronounced that there would be a drought, he left. He was still following the instructions of God during that time. And when he left, he had another set of instructions that came to him. And these set of instructions can be found in the same chapter, 1 Kings, it's chapter 17, verses 8 through 10. And again, I'm going to read the New King James Version of the scripture. It reads, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Did you hear that? Again, Elijah, he followed the instructions of God. And as he followed the instructions of God, God basically fulfilled what he said he would fulfill in Elijah's being obedient. He went to the place where God told him to go, Zarephath, and there there was a, a widow woman. She was there. It described what she was doing. And when he went to her, she actually was, she was receptive to the prophet Elijah. And if you read more into that chapter, you read how she was telling, she later told the prophet that she was gathering sticks and she was going to go and make a meal for she and her son so they would die. But Elijah said to her about for her to go on before she does that, for her to first prepare something for him. And she did that. And again, everything that God told Elijah to do, he followed. And this is what the teaching that the man of God, what he expressed in that teaching. And that's why he mentioned about obedience, obedience being a characteristic that the prophet Elijah had. Now, remember, I asked God, I asked God what was on his heart. I asked him what was on his mind that he wanted to share with his people. And I told you I didn't get an answer. Now, I first was, was, was in his presence on Friday with that. I told you about the man of God on Saturday afternoon and his teaching about the prophet Elijah. That Monday, it was Monday during the day, I had a notification to come up in my phone and it was a notification of a teaching. Now, this particular teaching was being done by a pastor and a prophet by the name of Joshua Giles. And what he was teaching about, he was teaching about prophetic provisions. Now he was, was saying in that teaching that God provides for his people during times, times that are lean, during good times, as well as when times aren't so good. And he said it was prophetic provision because it's what we, you hear from God when God provides for you. Now, pro means in place of, and theme means to speak. So when someone is speaking about something being prophetic, they're generally speaking about hearing from God, God speaking. Because if we know God's word is God breathed. And he tells us that man does not live by bread alone. We live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when he's speaking of a prophetic provision, it's coming out of God's mouth teaching us and letting us know that he will be our provider. And it's very interesting that the scripture that this man of God, Joshua Giles, pointed out was 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 5. And I just read you that scripture. That's the scripture that talks about how Elijah followed the instructions that God gave him. And so the teaching here, the message of this teaching was just like in the case of the prophet Elijah, we are to follow God to the letter, the things we are to obey him. And obedience was very key. And that happened on Monday afternoon. Monday evening later, I was searching for something in my phone and a teaching pops up. With this time, it was a prophet by the name of Chichi Bula, and she is from South Africa. She was speaking about the emerging future was what her title was. But an example that she gave when she was talking about the emerging future was the prophet Elijah. And she just, she just referenced again that same 
book, that same chapter. She said, 1 Kings chapter 17. And she mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 17 that the prophet Elijah was obedient. And through his obedience, he received favor from God. Now, if we take a look at the scripture I just went over with you, one of the scriptures, the Holy Spirit is using that scripture now for me to get it, give an example of what the prophet Chichibula was speaking, what she was speaking of when she talked about provisions. God gives you favor through his provisions. Now, as I read 1 Kings chapter 17, I read verses 8 through 10. As I read that scripture, it first talked about how the word of the Lord came to prophet Elijah again and told him to go to Zarephath. And when he went to Zarephath and he met the widow, when he met her, she gave him provision. She gave him favor. And the reason why it is provision and favor, and I believe the Holy Spirit is pointing this out, is because she herself were in a, she was in a condition, she and her son, that in the natural, one wouldn't think that they could provide for anyone else. But she obeyed, think about it, she obeyed the prophet of God. She believed him. So she obeyed him. And when she obeyed his instructions, she also received provision seeing her son. So in this instance, what we should know, what we can learn from this is that when we obey God, he provides provisions for obedience. There are provisions and favor that come with obedience. It is very rare that you'll find people who are in the midst of a, of a famine. There's no food, there's no water, the provisions are lacking, but yet they take the little that they have like she did. And it wasn't just for her, she and her son. She took what she and her son had and she believed the man of God. And if you read on about what happened to her, she ended up being blessed throughout the whole famine, throughout that whole time that it didn't rain. Talking about wake up, move in obedience. Now, as we think about this, God answered me. He answered my question that I asked him on Friday and he answered me three times. And why is that important? It's important because we need to know that when we ask God a question, just like I asked the question while I was in his presence, while I was worshiping him, because I wanted to know if there was something in particular in his heart. And now I know it is obedience to him. But when we worship him, he also gives us in many instances, favor, favor with people. And oftentimes it's people that we would least expect to be the people who would give us favor. And that's what the prophetess Chichibu pointed out, favor. And the favor was connected with the obedience. See, we oftentimes think that if God is going to, going to bless us some sort of way by us being obedient, it's going to be something that's, that's tangible like monetary, or we get a promotion at work, or we get a check in the mail, or someone puts a big amount of money in our account. But sometimes it is those small things that God looks at and he judges our obedience based on those things. And since the man of God, going back to what Elijah did when he went and he sought the widow of Zarephath, when he sought her and he did what God instructed him to do when it was related to her, he was blessed and she was blessed. And that's the life that we want to live. We're talking about waking up and we move in obedience. Now, another scripture that is very important when it comes to being obedient to God, that Holy Spirit placed in my heart, is found in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And I'm going to read you the New Living Translation version of that scripture. And it reads, now this is a, let me give you a little background. This is a conversation between the prophet Samuel and King Saul. King Saul had just been given instructions to completely eliminate the Amalekites, to wipe them out. But instead of eliminating the Amalekites, he kept King Agag, one of the kings. He, he let him to remain alive. 
And he also allowed the men who were in his army to take the spoils from the Amalekites. So when Samuel gets on the scene to find out what was the result of the battle that Saul was supposed to eliminate the Amalekites in, he heard sheep bleeping, he heard, he saw animals around, uh, and he was just stunned of what he saw. And also King Agag came up to him and greeted him. He was stunned. And this is part of the conversation that he had with King Saul, because it's very important for us to recognize that God does not honor partial obedience. Either you're obedient to him, to the letter, or he looks at it as disobedient. So again, it's 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And this is Samuel speaking to Saul. It reads, but Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering a fat of rams. Did you hear that? There's a difference between obedience and sacrifice. When you obey someone, you submit your will to their will. In this case, you are obeying God's will rather than your own will, and you're submitted to him. I'm reminded of a scripture in the book of James that says, submit therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It comes with submission and that's obedience. You submit your will to him. Sacrifice is when you give up, you give up something of yours that is of value. They're two different things. And what Saul didn't recognize is that he, he felt that he had obeyed God and he was listening to the people because he said the people, the men particularly in his military, wanted the spoils. So he allowed them to get the spoils. And he was waiting on Samuel. When you read that whole account, he was waiting on Samuel to come to him and he got impatient. And he himself, meaning King Saul, was getting ready to do the sacrifice talking about wake up, move in obedience. So this is a very important principle. A principle is a law, a law in the kingdom of God. Because sometimes people think because they serve the Lord, they serve in the church, they serve in the ministry, that that is sufficient. But God wants your heart. Obedience is a heart condition talking about, ooh, wake up, move in obedience. And when we're moving in obedience, that means we're in alignment with the will of God. And that's important to him. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15, and I'm going to share with you the New King James Version of the Scripture. And this is Jesus speaking. It reads, if you love me, keep my commandments. Did you hear that? If you love the Lord Jesus, he's saying you will obey him. You obey whom and what you love. And so Jesus is speaking to us that he's expecting us to keep his commandments and we keep his commandments by obeying him. In the book of Acts, Chapter 5, verse 29, and I'm going to read you the New King James Version of that scripture. And this is when the apostles were speaking. It reads, we would rather obey God than obey man. Did you hear that? Are you interested in obeying God? Or are you more concerned about obeying man? See, many of us have to make that decision because we're living in a world where oftentimes we have to decide what's most important. Is it more important to please God? Or even if it's more important to please our families, sometimes our families become idols and we put our family before we put God. We put our career before we put God. We put popularity before we put God. Obedience is important. 
Because in the case of with what King Saul did, King Saul's inability to follow God, to follow his instruction, was, was recognized in subsequent generations when we had the case in the book of Esther. When Esther had to go before the king and she and her, many of her maids, they decided not to eat. They fasted because they were facing annihilation. Haman, the person who was coming against Queen Esther and all of the Jews, he was from the bloodline of the Amalekites. And if Saul had done what he was supposed to do generations earlier, they wouldn't have been facing a whole annihilation of a group of, of, a, of a nation. Talking about wake up, move in obedience. So our obedience has have much further ramifications. Let me say that again, much further ramifications than we even recognize. To us, it may be something small. See, in the case of Saul, he thought, it's no big deal if I let my men take the spoils. It's no big deal if I do the sacrifice myself. It's no big deal if I let King Agat live. Well, it is to God. And so it's important for us to recognize that we must obey his word. One thing I would say about Holy Spirit and about God, he is not going to force us to do anything. He is not going to run us down and drag us into obedience. He, with a still, small voice, will instruct us. His word says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way in which you should go. I will guide you with my eye. God is gentle. He's kind. He's holy. He's righteous. But he expects us to keep his commandments. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 6, and I'm going to read you the Amplified Version of the Scripture. It reads, so then let us not sleep in spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does, but let us keep wide awake, alert, and cautious, and let us be sober, self-controlled, calm, and wise. Did you hear that? Obedience is a heart condition, and it has a temperament. And in that scripture, Paul is writing there, the different characteristics or traits of those who are obedient. And when we awake, we stay awake, when we stay alert, the outcome is that we will be able to hear God's word. We will be able to submit to him. And if we submit to him and hear his word, then we will thrive, even in the midst of a world where there's uncertainty. I wanna to speak to those today who heard this message, wake up, move in obedience. And they know for a fact that God is speaking to them. If you're that person and you know that God drew you to this message and you know that you need to walk in obedience and you need to be in his family, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message today. I hadn't planned on listening to this message but when I heard about obedience, I know that I have not been obedient to you. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross. And I believe that you raised him from the dead. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins today. I'm asking you, God, to forgive me for being disobedient. I thank you. Thank you for drawing me to you today. Thank you for convicting me and letting me know that you still love me. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for Phyllis's New Creation. And remember, Phyllis's New Creation exists so that you will know how to apply God's Word to your everyday life. To make today's message, wake up, move in obedience. This is from the throne room of heaven. And the Holy Spirit wants us to know that 
if you love the Lord Jesus, keep his, his commandments and know that his commandments are not grievous. They're not. And if we obey him, we will be in alignment for his will for our lives. Fill us a new creation. If you want more information, you can go up to the website. And there you can find out more about ministry opportunities. You can ask us by making a request to pray for you. You can download the form that we have for people who want to explore even some of the minutes, some of the scriptures and the ministry opportunities that will be coming up for you. We invite you to go on the website and take advantage of the opportunities that we have there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for every person, every soul that heard this message. And we pray that every person that heard this message will open up their heart and sup with Jesus and Jesus with them. And they will walk in obedience. Amen. Have a wonderful day. If you'd like to sow today into my ministry, go to my website, phyllisanewcreation.com. Phyllis and New Creation exists so that you will know how to apply the Word of God to your everyday life. And also, be sure to check out my weekly podcast. Welcome to Phyllis a New Creation, a place where you learn how to apply the Word of God to your everyday life. I'm Phyllis, your host, and for 18 years as an intercessor, the leader of our church prayer ministry, and a prophetic teacher, I have equipped people to use God's Word as their blueprint in meeting challenges head on. See, there are many voices speaking to us in the marketplace, and you can choose to spend time watching and listening to them. Yet there's only one voice that rises above the fray, the voice of God. And one way God speaks to us is through his word. Every message I share with you on Phyllis and New Creation is from God, sent from God, so you will live out his word every day. Now download your free Living Out the Word guide, subscribe to the weekly podcast, and explore other resources that will help you to draw even closer to the Lord and with your walk with him. Thank you.